Okay, let's go ahead and insert our first slider. You can do that by going up to Insert, Slider, and you have a few starting sliders for you. So I'm going to go ahead and just select the first one and just click and drag to place it on your slide. So it's a lot like just inserting other shapes and graphics and storyline. You can move it around. You can do a few other things with it. We have um, basically two parts to our slider. We have the thumb, which is right here, and we can control the size of the thumb by clicking and dragging on this uh, sizing handle. And then we also have the track, which is where the uh, thumb follows for the slider. So we can make that bigger as well. We can make it smaller. And then we also have some, some pre-built and custom styles for these. If you go up to the Format tab, you see that you have some track styles that you can choose from. It just updates them, right, some options. And then you also have some thumb styles that can customize as well, right? So you can make some different types of thumbs, make that smaller, bigger, choose some different outlines for the track. I'm going to go ahead and just jump back to our default. There we go. So you have a lot of options for customizing how these look and feel. A lot like shapes, you can fill them with even images as well. If you come back up here to the design tab, here's where you can actually control how the slider works. And you'll notice up here in the top left that when we created the slider, Storyline went ahead and created a variable. And that's because sliders are always attached to variables. And the reason Storyline does that is because the slider is always going to update the value. So as you're dragging the, the slider back and forth, Storyline is adjusting the value of this variable, and that's how it's able to do things based on where the slider is. You also have some options for what to do when the slider is either released or dragged, right? So do you want to update the values as the slider is being dragged, or you can do it when the slider is released. We'll leave it at the default for, for now. And then over here, you have the start and end range for the slider. So in this case, the starting range is zero, right? And the end is 10. So the variable over here, right? This can be adjusted uh, to anything between zero and 10. And this also corresponds to the number of points that the slider can be dropped on, right? So if you look at this, or if you were counting this as I move this, there's actually 10 different stopping points here. And the reason it moves by one, right? There's increasing by one is by the step value. So I'm gonna change this initial back to zero, and the step value is one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and so on. If I wanted to increase this and make this maybe by two, then I should see that because I only have a range of zero to 10, I'm only gonna have five points on my slider. And that's just how these all work together. And I could also change the initial starting point to five, which is going to place this in the middle. I go back and change that to zero and change that to one. Let's just go ahead now and try this out. We'll just build something really simple using a slider. I'm going to move this down and let's go ahead and insert an illustrated character. And I'll crop her and just make her a little bit bigger. All right, so what we want to do is just control her states with this slider. And I'm going to change the uh, couple things here on the slider just to make this really easy. So if I come up here to the start, I'm going to change this to 1. So I want it to start at the value of 1, and I'm going to give this a really short range. So I'm going to have three, a range of 1 to 3. We'll make the initial starting point at number 2 at 2, which is going to be in the center of the slider, right? So we'll make that a neutral, we'll go to the left and we'll change her to one uh, state, and then we'll move it to the right and change it to another state. So the way we work with sliders is we need to really use triggers, right? We're gonna use triggers to evaluate what the number is or what the value is for our slider. So let's go ahead and start with a value of one. What should, what should she be when the slider value is one? So go ahead and add a trigger. And so we want to change the state of, we want to change the state of our character, and let's say angry, so one of the pre-built expressions. Not when the user clicks, but when the slider moves, 
and only one slider on our slide, which is slider 1, when it's equal to a value of 1. Go ahead and click OK. And I can copy this trigger. So I can just right click and choose copy or use the toolbar and say paste. And now I want to change the state of her to neutral when the slider is equal to 2. 2 is the starting point that we set right here. So the default value is going to be 2. Click OK. And I'll paste it and do one more. And we will change her to happy when the slider value is 3. And to also see this in action, let's go ahead and put a reference variable on our slide because these work just the same with sliders as they do when you're working with regular variables. So go back up to Insert, Reference, Slider 1 is fine. And just make that a little bit bigger. And let's preview our slide. So right here now, the slider is starting in the middle and it shows a value of 2. And we set a trigger to say, uh, change her state to neutral when it's 2. When I move this to the left, it's 1, she's angry. Move it back here to 2, neutral, move it to 3, and she's happy. And again, this is where that reference variable really helps us validate that the slider value and the character in this case is doing what we want it to because we know what these values should be. So there's a lot of neat things you can do with sliders. You can customize them, you can change the values, and it's really easy to work with them. In the next tutorial, we're actually going to build out a moon phase activity where the slider will control the different phases of the moon. It'll show you a little bit more ways to work with custom based uh, image sliders. Show you a little bit more ways, it'll show you a few more ways to work with custom sliders in Articulate Storyline.